Hey guys, BAKD here. In today's video, we're doing a revamped Garmer guide. Uh, my last one I did was, um, I think, eight months ago or something. Um, we didn't know much about this ship. We didn't know the metas in the game. So we were going to go over a lot of different builds in this video. Um, just to get you guys thinking about how you want to build your Garmer. Um, we're going to go over skills required along with the roll bonuses and what the ship can do. Um, we are going to start off, you'll see place markers for each of the different builds you can look over. Um, there will be no PvP in this video, it's all PvE, different PvP fits and all types of things. And a little bit of showcasing what this ship can do. So let's uh, go ahead and just pull up our fitting menu. Now the Mordu's Legion Garmer, with more people getting these ships, they're definitely going to want to know how to build these ships. So first off, the roll bonus, it gets a negative 50% flight time bonus, which is actually good. Um, paired with the 200% missile torpedo velocity, so it means this is going to shoot like a machine gun pretty much. It's going to have an extremely low flight time with a absolutely crazy missile velocity. So small frigates going, you know, 6,000 meters a second are not going to be able to escape the missiles. This thing will absolutely shred them. You get a plus one scramble strength to scramblers only, not disruptors. Now going to advanced small missile torpedo bonus. Per level, you get 20% damage, 5% small missile torpedo velocity, explosion velocity, so that means it's going to apply better um, to smaller ships. Um, unfortunately, the ship does not have a nano core yet, but once they do get one, which will probably come in the next couple weeks, you will get even more DPS or whatever they give you on there. Now, per Advanced Frigate Command Bonus, you are getting a 10% Scramble Strength, or Optimal Range, and Warp Disruptor Optimal Range. Now, that is around 50% if you are maxed Advanced Frigate Command. And that makes your range for tackling absolutely crazy. Um, this thing is uh, meant for kiting, but you can build this in a lot of different ways. And of course, we're going to go over that. Um, flight velocity 417 as a base. That is a little bit slower than a Condor Interceptor. Um, so you have to build this thing with a little bit more speed to get going. Capacitor is 586 um, without any boost. The power grid is better than a Condor, and we'll see what the max power grid is. And the source radius is slightly larger than a Condor as well. Um, paired with a micro warp drive, you are going to be an easier target to hit, so definitely take that into account. Um, the faster, the better. Um, resistances wise, it says it's supposed to be a shield tank, so you can always plug the EM, but um, hopefully you're going to be able to kite, so I wouldn't recommend any defensive rigs on this unless you don't want to lose it. You can go more defensive, and it will definitely work. Um, but this thing is meant for sheer power, and uh, yeah. Now, skill-wise, um, just like the main server, I am 5-5-5, five, 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 all maxed out frigate skills, so that's how I'm going to be modeling this ship. Um, skill-wise, what I would recommend for um, the maximum amount of speed, of course, is your cruising technology. I would go for maxed or 554 at least micro warp drive operation. That is a shared skill be between all of your ships, so that's definitely something good to max. Same with some afterburner. You don't need to have um, 555 for my first build, but it is recommended because you get the highest bonuses. It goes from 8 to 15% just from uh, the 4 to 5 level. Now command is big as well. You want to get expert command because you start getting velocity and inertia, which is huge. So that 10% boost in the expert level is going to help the speed on this. 
uh, maintenance technology you can be pretty basic on this you can go whatever shield operation you have depending how you're gonna build it you might not even have a shield booster um, but that's definitely an option as well get defense you don't get too much defense so I'm um, running like five five three or four five three or something is definitely a viable option um, you're really trying not to get hit at all so defense isn't too important now engineering electronics and well these two are pretty big um, having the highest um, highest engineering will give you more power grid to fit more things um, you also have a small missile torpedo power grid need in the expert level um, so if you're having trouble fitting modules definitely think about maxing out the expert level on that um, ele electronic systems um, definitely get this as high as you can it's not as necessary especially electronic warfare you may not be even equipping anything that has anything to do with that um, but with some builds you will but a little bit of skills in that targeting um, that's pretty self-explanatory everybody should have targeting um, weapons um, the highest weapon skills possible of course getting the maxed um, five advanced is going to give you the 20 percent boost so that is the whole of the dps I would 100% recommend maxing out at least advanced small missile torpedoes there. I'm not sure if that's the operation. Let's see if I can pull this up a different way. Of course, it's going to give me all these skills. Um, but yeah, you want to max that out, definitely. Now going into my first build, um, that is all the skills required. We're gonna go into the small torpedo build. This is a absolute shredder. Um, this will kill pretty much any frigate or destroyer you come into range with. Um, if you see these missiles, they have a 1.4 second flight time and a 7,425 meters per second flight velocity, which is absolutely uh, just crazy like they take a second to hit the ship and uh, they're crazy fast they like shoot through the hole of the ship it's so fast now this is a kind of ratting fit um, you definitely don't want to get hit by three or four webs or you'll probably die and I'm sure you've seen some of my videos where I solo a T8 inquisitor with this build and it definitely is viable pop on two Nosferatu's a predator web and you orbit within the Nosferatu range of six kilometers um, all the way to 10 but you see our missiles can hit up to 10 kilometers with this build um, with the power grid I'm at 96 so I was able to fit a c-type uh, medium shield booster c-type ballistic control and just a c-type small afterburner um, you cannot fit a micro warp drive without a power grid rig for this one. Um, going into um, the rigs here, of course you want to do two activations and one damage. Unless you want to be safe, I would not put any um, resistance or anything on there. Um, this thing's meant to tank. Um, speed, not a speed tank or range kite, however you want to say it. Um, depending if you're brawling like this or if it's always going to be with small torpedoes you could do something like a shield boost amount and an EM plug um, but this is pretty powerful with the medium shield booster and two Nosferatu's now for this build you can do a CCC or whatever you want inertia and other velocity um, what have you but this is great paired with the Nosferatu's I have upwards to eight minutes of everything active on here for it to be capped out two tier three velocities I think every build on the Garmer should have two tier three velocities in my opinion um, you can sub one of these out but you get to a speed where things can start one banging you and drones can start hitting you, even the slow ones on Myrmidons and stuff, so it gets kind of scary. Um, so I would always recommend two Tier 3 velocities, or at least two Tier 2s at minimum. Um, that is a must. Our base velocity is 771, 
But let's go ahead and just undock really quick and check our stats. Now I am going to link um, the video at the end and potentially in the description if you want to see how these small torpedoes perform in Anomaly. I'm not going to do it with this one because I want to reduce um, the video size on this and not have it like a 45 minute video. But if we pop this and this, let's go into our fittings. We are at 678 hot. And we are going 2,200 meters a second, which is actually extremely good. Um, you can take two webs and still speed tank with this build. Um, once you get into the three and four, you are going to be pumping your booster like crazy. Um, you see without the Nosferatu's though, you have to be within range. So you're pumping 10 to 12% um, capacitor each time you pump that. So you have to be careful. But what I'll do, I'll just go into Anomaly and just fire a few shots off and you can see how much DPS this build does. Alright, here we are. This is just a T9 uh, Blood Raider or something. Let's go ahead and just lock onto this. So nothing should be able to hit us. Tracking disrupted. So let's start firing. Nosferatu. So 1100, and if you see how fast this thing just lobs its missiles off, it's pretty intense. Let's pop our ballistic control. Oof, it's like a machine gun. We're absolutely shredding this thing. Now we are taking some hits. I'm not sure from what, but you just pop your shield booster and you can uh, stay alive here. Now let's go ahead and just attack a purifier. Let's shred this purifier now. Oof. Now that was a purifier 2 and you see how fast we shredded it. If that was a frigate you would absolutely tear him up. All right, so this is of course my next build. This is the Frigate Hunter. Now you can potentially swap the Disruptor for a second web. If you dual web and scram a Frigate, they are gonna be absolutely torn up. Now with that said, you can do a Micro Warp Drive, 100% if you are only hunting Frigates and destroyers that you can kill within 13 seconds in most cases i would put a damage control on there once you hit down to armor you pop that and typically they will die um, you can do the c-type ballistic control system to kill them even faster but in most cases when i'm hunting frigates and destroyers i will pop on a afterburner so when i get scrammed i pop the afterburner and it gives me some speed tank first there um, small weapons that they're shooting at me. Um, I would have another web in this spot, but if we look at our disrupt range, we are at 45 kilometers, and our scram range is at 20 kilometers. So no doubt you're going to be able to shoot right into them if they are not smart and tackle the crap out of them. Um, if we just go ahead and undock, let's check our micro warp drive speed, and we'll probably check this. Undock numerous amount of times with all of the different builds now if we go in and pop that and check our speed we are going 47 21 meters a second which is pretty darn fast um, that is just slightly slower than a condor and a slasher 2 and a atron i think are slightly faster um, as well slasher 2 would absolutely blow this thing out of the water with speed But if you can get the jump on one you are going to absolutely tear them up But that is just a decent torpedo um, Hunting build uh, you don't want to be <laughs> bum rushing somebody with torpedoes um, Yeah, you definitely don't want to do this with a bigger ship like a cruiser because you will probably get killed before you can apply enough damage um, let's go ahead and just check something really quick. 
Now, we don't really need too many like uh, explosion radius bonuses, but what I wanted to do is some some more flight velocity. Maybe two um, flight times might be better because it does have a reduction. And let's find the other one. It's going to be this one. Okay. Let's see how far we can get our torpedo range. Of course, we have a pretty good chunk of DPS taken out. We're down to 350 DPS um, with no ballistic. Now our torpedoes go 9,100 meters a second, and we got it all the way to 14 kilometers. I wonder if the torpedoes would even hit. They have a one second flight time and extremely fast. We are just going to go try it really quick. Alright, so I am attempting... So I'm having a little bit of trouble uh, keeping my orbit, but I'm right at 15. Let's see. It seems to be hitting at 14 to 15. What if we went to like 15? When it goes to 18, we start missing. Hmm, that's interesting. You might be able to scram and web and shoot torpedoes. You might need to build a little bit more um, inertia into your build, though. It can't seem to keep a tight orbit with no inertia on there. Yeah, now we're missing. So you'd have to go in pretty close. I don't think that's very viable to put a uh, flight time and velocity to get added range. Yeah, right about 15 kilometers we're hitting with it. So if you really want to chance death, you can uh, you can do that. All right, and this is going to be my tank fit. Um, we have small torpedoes. This is kind of like a ratting fit, in my opinion. You can swap the scram out for something if you don't feel like you need it. Um, also, you don't need two nosses, so potentially you can put a web there, or for one of the web or one of the nosses, put a web. Um, but if you see, our capacitor is eight minutes and fifty-one seconds pulsing this hard. You do not want to run this thing non-stop because it will cap you out. Um, but if you unfit this, you have a minute and four second ca uh, capacitor. Now, if you look at the bottom, we went with the medium shield booster at 475 boost amount, a adaptive for some tank, and a small afterburner for the speed tank. Um, Rig-wise, you can do anything you want, but a CCC is good for recovery. A flight velocity is necessary. You can't skip that. And then a dynamic fuel valve for more capacitor. Um, this is kind of like the long-term um, ratting build. Now on the low slots, of course you can change any of these you want. We have a EM uh, screen reinforcer here for the 40% resistance. A activation time, which you can switch for, switch for a califaction. Um, this build does work with small missiles as well, but one activation time and a shield boost amount, which can be subbed for a uh, damage uh, rig as well. But this is a extremely tanky build. You're going to speed tank very well. You're going to be going pretty quick with the afterburner. Um, you can kind of just decide your mid slots. You can swap whatever you want for whatever you think's needed. Um, but if you pop the afterburner and the shield, let's just see. So we're going 1900 meters a second. You can probably hold one to two webs without getting hit. Tank wise, we are looking at 8100. Not too bad, but we're about 60% resistances around the board. And when you pulse your shield, it pretty much heals 30 to 40% of your shield in one tick. 
Um, you have to have your NOS on for it to be reliable. Um, that's why the torpedoes work the best because you're going to be close range right with your NOS. Um, but technically you have a pretty high capacitor recharge so you see it's going up 1% a second extremely fast so technically if you're pulsing it once a blue moon you should be good. Now guys this is an exceptional build. I know the DPS is a little bit lower um, and of course there's a few modifications to this build. You definitely don't want a scram here you want two disruptors and this spot right here is going to be um, for your uh, resonant scanner so two disruptors resonant scanner to scan out targets now um, we did three c-type small missile launchers c-type micro warp drive for our speed a ballistic control system and of course whatever module you want in this spot you can do another ballistic you can do a shield extender is not going to fit a small shield extender a damage control a small shield booster see if a medium will fit now if you do fit a medium it says 15 seconds so I wouldn't recommend that so potentially a small shield booster and or um, a damage control would go great in that spot you could do an afterburner just in case you get scrammed but that is not the point of this build now if we look at our rigs um, of course I did two velocities now for this bottom slot you can probably remove uh, the CCC and you can do let's see what our options are you can definitely do a polycarbon that would be a good fit you can do a hybrid rig with more velocity polycarbon one of the integrated rigs you can do um, a semiconductor and a CCC and a targeting combined into an integrated rig but this third slot is def definitely negotiable you can change it for whatever you want but for this build I have no DPS rigs and I did two or one flight velocity two flight velocities and one flight time bonus for the maximum range on this build now if we look at our missiles we are at 40 kilometers now with a fully maxed out large newt they can typically only hit up to 35 kilometers so if they do not have over four points of disruption power you can successfully shoot targets trying to large newt you um, if you get within that 35 kilometers they will shoot you down for a little bit but if we look at the large newt let's go into neutralizer and look at our large and medium medium is only like 14 or 15 kilometers and a large you see is 19 plus 11 it goes to 30 kilometers which is um, I'm not sure if that's the max or not but um, we're gonna equip this on a ship and uh, see how far it goes I think the max is 35 don't quote me on that but if you orbit around 37 to 38 you should be able to pretty much uh, kite a large newt and a battleship you're gonna be going fast enough you're gonna be able to disrupt them at 45 kilometers with all those flight velocities your missiles are going 1500 meters a second um, so yeah that's that's just crazy how fast these missiles shoot off but let's go ahead and just undock see what kind of DPS this outputs now before we go into the anomaly um, an Armageddon gets a large neutralizer bonus so I would not recommend attacking an Armageddon well you will be far enough away but the optimal range is right where you're going to be sitting at 30 36 kilometers so they are going to be popping off um, the entire neutralization amount but let's equip this to a different ship and see what the common large newt gives you well we're looking at it here it is 38 kilometers um, you do have a significant amount of fall off um, so 
let's see if you're upwards to 35 you're going to be getting hit for pretty low amounts of neutralization um, so if we go back to our Garma really quick um, potentially that extra engineering slot I would go with a CCC probably a CCC rig right there to when you do get hit you can recover fast enough and potentially either the ballistic control or the C-type booster can go um, and I would maybe go with like a small cap battery potentially well, I don't have any small cap batteries um, but if you're able to recharge fast enough um, potentially you'll be able to take tank large newts at that distance this is a cool build too because you can disrupt people not only tank large newts you can uh, disrupt people at <laughs> 45 kilometers and shoot missiles off um, you can really like extremely far range tank people so let's take this into the anomaly now and shoot a ship and see what kind of damage it does Okay, we are going to orbit around 38 kilometers and we're off around 38. So now let's go ahead and fire off our shots. Okay, let's stack our missiles so we can actually see what kind of damage they do. Now what I'm a little bit worried about is um, this is not speed tanking like I want. We are getting uh, shot. So let's shoot this off. 2500 a volley with no DPS rigs. With our ballistic on. Looks like we are missing. We got to go a little bit closer. Oof, those missiles shoot fast. I don't know how we're missing at this range, but we are. Yeah, 2686. Pretty juicy. So let's go slap our damage rigs on again and see what kind of damage a realistic build will do. Alright, so we are going to go into a standard Garmer build now. And you have lots of different options for this. Um, of course the three C type missiles we are going to get a 29.7 kilometer range with no added rigs to that now you do want your resonant scanner in this slot now you can go with the scram because it does give you that extra point um, you get four I'm not sure if it's bugged out it should be five looking on the wrong screen there we go five jammer strength with a 20 optimal range so you usually want to orbit around 18 um, you can go with a long range disruptor as well you can swap the predator web out for a long range disruptor you do not really want to be within brawling distance you want to be out of range of people shooting them um, they usually won't be able to escape with how fast your missiles are and how far the range is So even if you're chasing down somebody you still should be shooting them So that web I'm going to typically be rolling around with the predator disruptor and the resonance scanner to find people in that slot Now of course the C type small shield booster is definitely negotiable you can put whatever you want in this slot, a damage control, um, another ballistic, um, but how I'm going to be rolling around, I like the C-type small shield booster, so if I do take a little bit of damage, I can recover uh, my ballistic control system just to get a huge boost in DPS, but this can be negated for like a capacitor battery or even a damage control with the shield booster. Um, if you do the capacitor battery, you can escape a large newt. If you do get hit by one, you can pop that and still micro warp drive off. Um, but for rigs, we are going to go activation time, damage bonus, and activation time. This is the best for the highest amount of DPS. 
We are not going to integrate any integrated rigs into this build, but they are definitely viable. Um, the flight velocity is a must. Um, if you were to go with an integrated rig system, I would swap this polycarbon out and do a 4P or a 3P with more velocity. Um, a polycarbon added on there because the orbit is slightly um, bad without it. And for the last slot, I would do a um, micro warp drive activation time. Let's just go in there and pull it up for the 3P. And then if you add another one to that, you could even do three warp core or four warp core optimizer threes for the two points of uh, jammer strength. That will be extremely expensive. That's what I'm talking about. A dynamic fuel valve that will help your capacitor usage out. Um, but this is going to be a pretty standard build for the Garmer in my opinion. You can always swap one of these rigs out for whatever you like, but I would definitely recommend the Calefaction and the Accelerator. Um, you really can't skip out on the velocities. You have to have that speed tank aspect or you might get one banged. This thing is a little bit larger than Interceptors, but this is a standard build is what I would recommend. Let's go ahead and head back into the anomaly and just see what we hit with this build. So here we go. Let's pop our ballistic and we are 527 hot. Let's go ahead and launch these off. Okay, 2400 with the ballistic and we should be within scram range. So you can scram your target. With this, I would probably go to 16 kilometers and we should comfortably be um, in scram range there. You can also have your disruptor on there if they do break off with an afterburner or something. You still should be able to disrupt them. We are taking a little bit of damage and I'm not sure why the speed tank isn't working as well as I thought. But we're going 4300 meters a second with a uh, inertia on there. Yep, we have a polycarbon, so the orbit on this is slightly tougher, but we are doing pretty heavy DPS. Um, but let's uh, go back and dock, and let's go try a cheese one-shot build. Now, this is going to be my Jebate clip um, that you see on my video. Of course, I've got two ballistic controls. Down below, I have uh, three Califactions for the damage. Um, we are only at 372 DPS, so like I said, the um, activation times are going to give you more DPS. But that is not the point. This is for one-shotting frigates and pretty much two-shotting destroyers. Um, depending how fast they're going. Actually, let's wait. Oh, we missed it. So if you swap one of those 17.5 damages for a explosion radius reduction, that is going to apply more damage. Um, potentially, I would get a scram and a web on there. I just stuck a target painter on there for the heck of it, um, just to see what kind of hits we can get. So let's go back into here. Gained 4 XP, okay, whatever that means. So, let's try it on this Mauler. Let's target paint him. Pop both ballistics. We are at 557. Now let's see these hits, 3100, not too bad. But this pretty much should one or two shot um, frigates, no doubt, unless they have a damage control. Let's shoot the Harbringer now. 2600. So with a ship with like no resistances, you should hit like 4000. Especially when they get a uh, nano core and you pop that on there for even more DPS. It is absolutely going to shred. Um, but that is a pretty juicy hit to say the least. Let's go ahead and shoot at this, this Omen. Potentially you could do two webs and a scram. Um, of course the target painter really doesn't do much. I just popped it on there for like a cheese build. 
All right, let's shoot him now. 3,100. Oof, on a cruiser. That was all of his shield. 2,800. Absolutely shredding. So now you just have to take that into account. A frigate has 5,800 de defense, depending how much resistance they have. Um, you're pretty much going to one or two shot any frigate out there with this build. Um, of course, it's not very practical. I would build this um, just like my last build, but yeah. Now, most people are probably asked, you can't really get a medium micro warp drive, but you can get a Mark V or Mark VII medium afterburner on this. Um, with how bad this orbits with a small already, I wouldn't recommend this build. You can get crafty though. I put one tier three power grid rig on there and let's just see our velocity, 3,700 meters a second. Um, but you bank like a sloppy dog. Um, definitely, you know, you can definitely put it on there. Some people like doing this and with how fast the missiles hit, and you don't really need to be in a tight orbit to land your 29 kilometer missiles. It definitely is viable. Definitely uh, you can get away from double webs. Um, yeah, you could do that. It's definitely a possibility. All right, so this is my last and final build. This is absolutely hilarious. It is not practical at all, but I was able to fit all the medium missiles on here. Um, so I go to my rigs and I did three tier three power grid rigs, all 12.5%, and I did all range rigs. Our medium missiles, our Mark V, some target painters, disruptor, Mark V ballistic, and also a Mark V afterburner. We are maxed out at 120 power grid. You will probably not be able to do this because you need all of the maxed medium missile skills to get the power grid on these to 33. But if you see our range is 72.4 kilometers, we can lob missiles off from a distance. That is absolutely hilarious. Let's just go shoot something real quick. All right, here we are. Let's just go ahead and shoot the mauler. Let's just see if it does any DPS. 1400 of volley, not bad. Not the best, but honestly, I don't even think you can fit these missiles on there. Um, in a normal scenario. Because I don't think anybody's going to have max missile skills that reduce all the power grid and stuff. Well guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed um, all of my hilarious builds. There are a couple good ones in there, but hopefully this is going to get you thinking about how you want to build your uh, Garmer, potentially with small torpedoes or um, long-range missiles. In my opinion, the long-range missiles are the best option. Of course, not the medium missiles, but just the regular um, C-type smalls. Um, you have lots of different rig um, combinations to make this thing absolutely shine. Whereas you go a little bit extra um, range or you do less range, more DPS, more kite, more speed, more capacitor management, you name it. Um, so definitely let me know in the descriptions how you are going to be building your Garmer. I know how I'll be building mine. and we will. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.